So much emphasis has been put on ratings, but people are also constantly complaining about them. So why do we have them? Should we look at changing the rating systems or should we use a new one altogether? Stay tuned to find out. Hello and welcome to HeiserCast episode 21. We got 20 episodes in and we thought we had such success with the first 20 episodes that we decided to take a week off. It was the 4th <laughs> of July. Uh, I'm sure all of you were enjoying your festivities, so we decided to join in the fun as well. So Did you guys we miss us? Here. Yeah, I hope you guys <laughs> missed us. But we are back here and we are going to have another exciting episode for you guys. Uh, but we're here again with Joanna and Lou. How was your guys' 4th of July? It was great. It was relaxing. Went down to the beach, had a nice cookout with family. Uh, always nice to get outside. Definitely got a sunburn. So uh, don't forget <laughs> that sunscreen I did and I am still paying for it. So, yeah. That's right. How about you, Lou? Uh, well, good to be back with you guys. Uh, yeah, the 4th of July was a great little break to take. It was like our version of spring break. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> midsummer uh, break. Yeah, midsummer break. Um, lots of family just popped up, so a lot of cooking, and uh, we did some fireworks for Fourth of July. Um, I hope everybody out there has their fingers still, and because uh, there's still the, the you know the summer swing here. Uh, so, wait, speaking of has their fingers, how's your thumb? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, uh, it's still trying to grow out. I think it's oh. going to take my nails probably going to take a good three to four months to grow out that nail. Um, I can feel it doesn't hurt. I didn't lose sensation. So that's good. That's good. Throwing is better. Things are normal in my game. I may have been a little dramatic (laughs) where I, I just, it was so, so like, it was scary that that happened. It was just real quick. Oh my God. I can't believe I hurt my, my thumb that badly. Yeah, of course. It was, it was, I can't believe it didn't get cut open but for the trauma that i kind of had it's like it was numb for three straight weeks i couldn't feel it on top of a little bit of pain oh my gosh behind it so it was was a little scary but i'm so i think past all that stuff i actually got some advice from people who reached out um through listening which was cool oh awesome Um, just how to ice it what to do what not to do you know maybe some foods to stay away from and I think I've actually been feeling pretty good from some of the tips I've got. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, you, you, you know, you take two steps back, but then, you know, you kind of just, you find other ways to bounce back. That's great. Oh, That's I'm glad right. to hear you're on the mend. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. It's getting better. So good. what about you, Dave? Did you film anything 4th of July or did you get to take a break off, a full break off? Um, so the weekend prior to 4th of July, 4th of July was the Monday uh, we did have oh, a yeah. tournament. It was blanking on the name of it right now. Every the, every weekend we have a different tournament. I can't remember. Was it Cosmic Tranquilcyon? Yes, that's it. <gasps> <laughs> Thank you. Wait, it sounded like I was involved with that, but I really wasn't. Like, <laughs> like it was almost cute or something. No. No, 100%. And that was an awesome <laughs> tournament. Sorry to everybody that was a part of that. Um, we have so many things, different weeks prior had i just forgot the name of that one um but yeah that was a great tournament weather wasn't supposed to be great held out perfectly dry all day two awesome courses down in south jersey Wait, that's great shout out to cosmic dave dave groundnick for running an awesome tournament his first td uh wow. first time TD cool. tournament, so shout out to him wow that's, and at two different courses yeah he, he, down. he, he, he went big. <laughs> yeah. that's a that's, a, that's have, a tough day but, he but did, they have yeah. such a they have such a solid group of people down there in south jersey so i'm i'm gonna guess that he didn't do it alone uh it's a it's a great oh, community yeah. so lots of help good, down good there. for them good for them that's awesome yep so filmed that then took the fourth off just you know had some friends over a little fire Blew off a couple of legal New Jersey fireworks. <laughs> I lit off very <laughs> illegal out of state fireworks. <laughs> I was just trying not to incriminate myself on something Whoa. we're posting. On, on it doesn't online. matter <laughs> if 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 they're listening and they want to come kick down my door over some fireworks. Let them if that's what the world comes to. But no, I oh, lit wow. off some. I lit, I lit off some big stuff. I like. I kind of was. The last thing I lit off, I'll just, I'll put it like this. If I lit that first, I wasn't going to light anything else after that. <laughs> so, well, it's good. You had to like pace it up to the finale. Yeah. Right. It just kept getting sketchier and sketchier. Oh boy. 
Uh, if I well, that's what Fourth of July is all about. <laughs> Go America! We're going to yeah. get into our t- today's topic. Um, what do we, we are, What do we have today, Dave? <laughs> we are talking about ratings. The elephant in the uh, room. We've gone twenty episodes in. Goodbye. And had a full episode about ratings. Oh no! A come lot back, of people. <laughs> that's what I keep saying to my rating. <laughs> are controversial. Have controversial um, opinions about ratings and it almost seems like everybody agrees which is kind of what we're going to be talking about everybody has the same thought but nothing's changing right so my my thought about it was so between different tournament registrations the divisions you play in and even potential sponsorships based off of your rating ratings seem to play a role in everything that has to do with disc golf so why do so many people complain about them and why do we still have the same system going on what do, we, what do we get? What do we get for complaints for ratings? What are they saying? They're just not going up fast enough or. I think the system in itself just doesn't make sense. You know, on the pro side of things, they always use the example of two of Paul McBeth's best rounds at two different courses just don't make sense because the higher or the lower scored round at a much easier course was rated higher than the lower scored round at a harder course. And that just was backwards for a lot of people. And then other things with how it it doesn't um, it doesn't correlate well with within regions. It doesn't necessarily represent how good of a player you are because of so many different factors. Right. Um, so it, a lot of people aren't talking are talking about how it's not ideal for a sport. It's kind of preventing us from moving forward that there should be a new system um so i just wanted to get your guys thoughts on it and what you think about ratings in general um i got a couple actual questions but let's just start with what your thoughts are about them in general we already know Luz. he wants to leave just because we're talking about it <laughs> <laughs> no no i want <laughs> well i would say that, i would say when we talk about ratings i think we need to separate a bit talking about pros touring pros and amateurs, because I think yeah. they are different tools completely. I think for amateurs, it's a great way to monitor progress. Um, definitely with rated rounds coming in, um, when you can look at, especially if you're you know playing locally, like you've probably played a couple tournaments at the same course. It's great to see your scoring and, and your progress in the scoring over time. Um, and overall, like as the months go on, it's nice to see an increase, hopefully, an increase um, in your rated rounds. Now, does it directly reflect how you're currently playing? Of course not, because you have rounds from a year back, um, which I think is tough. Let's say if you learn a new skill or your putt is like suddenly on and you're, you've been exploding and scoring well and you're scoring 100 points higher than you were last year, let's say like, wow, good for you. But that doesn't necessarily reflect in your overall rating. So amateurs, it's a good Maybe a bit skewed still, but a good starting point to track progress. But for pros, I I think really what you want to look at is like a dominance rating or a, that's really recency bias based um, because that really can uh, give you more insights on a potential, I think, winner for a tournament or outcomes for a weekend than a rating number. Right. How you're playing more recently. Mm-hmm. Just, I mean, we would just never have those kind of stats for amateurs. So that's why I'm like, right. Turing pros, yeah, that should be like the number one system for them. Because, uh, I mean, it matters how you're playing currently when you're out there on the pro tour, you know? Right. I mean, it's like, oh, no one cares about like your one bad round nine months ago. Like that's holding your rating back. Like that that means nothing. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, Lou, as a, as a professional – um, someone who plays at the professional level, what are your thoughts on ratings in general, pro level, amateur level? You know, <clears throat> ratings are a funny thing because I've kind of peaked up to a certain point and I've never really quite moved off of it. You know, the more I do, the lower the rating goes. But there's something funny that I noticed about ratings from when I decided to play and, and start playing and, and try to get a good rating. I noticed that the people who I think are way better than I was when I started playing, I watched them shoot and they shoot really good rounds, but they're just not rated enough. They're low. I'm like shocked. I'm like, I don't understand. Like you shot five down over here. That's pretty good. What was it rated? 915. It was 
10 points above my rating. I'm like, what are you talking about? You shoot <laughs> consistently two or three strokes worse than me during a round. And I'm like, you know, closer to 980. What if, I don't understand how that could be. Um, so I don't know how there it's, it's, it's hard for someone to get from a 900 up to a thousand rated without just bursting onto a scene and dominating. Um, so it's, it's really tough to put a finger on how ratings work fairly across the board from amateurs to professionals, like Joanna saying, it might need to be separate systems. Um, you know, ratings are always going to be there, whether you're a professional or an amateur. Um, you, you play a different sport, you'll have your, your times, you'll have your, your averages, your batting averages, you'll have um, your shot percentages, there's going to be statistics in whatever sport you do. And if you look at something like a, a rating, like a quarterback rating, it's not going to vary dramatically from week to week. It's so, it's, it's so much longer. It's a bigger average, but that when you get to the top level, it doesn't matter. It just becomes any given weekend. And that's where at the top, top, top level where all the eyes are on the sport most of the eyes, I'm going to say, not all the eyes, most of the eyes on the sport are what is happening at the top of the pile. And that's where we focus on the power rankings more, I think. And thank God for the power rankings, because I don't care. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't care who's 1,056 rated versus 1,057 rated, because I'm struggling to get 1,000 still. And I know <laughs> I could do it. So, but, but yeah, the power rankings are the thing that are going to save some of that at the end of the day, mm -hmm. because the rating is always going to get it wrong to where it doesn't really necessarily define you as a player. It's cool to be the highest rated player. I'm pretty sure it's prestigious. It's not an easy thing to do. There's only going to be one of you. Um, but, and the, the better player is going to be off of the power rank, power ranking I'm, I'm going to go with. So it's kind of funny though. I mean, when you say, Oh, you know, ratings or not you, you, plural, you, whoever, you know, say like, oh, ratings don't matter. Y'all talk then, about ratings. <laughs> oh, gosh. But it's when like one. ratings don't matter. And then you still see top pros posting their graphic, whatever, saying like, OK, here's like it's ratings day, ratings update. Like I went up this amount of points and it's like, OK, but at the same time, you're like, oh, this doesn't matter. And yet it's like still a publicity post, which I get, you know, got to stay relevant on Insta or the gram or whatever. But like. Okay. I mean, it, it kind of doesn't add up to me all the time. And it's like, wh where is that emphasis on ratings? And, you know, you said something that really made me think like he didn't play, he or she didn't play enough to have a real accurate representation of their play. And it got me thinking like, you know, of course there is a minimum, well, maybe not, but a minimum number of rounds before they can start like dropping off or something. And I, I wish that was a thing, let's say for amateurs to keep a more relevant rating for them. Like as long as you have a certain amount in the calculation, let's say it's under a year, the oldest ones drop off. They do. Um, they do. Not, over but like they have to be a calendar year in your rating. So like you could have, let's say you have 50 rated rounds in a year, like they would stay, but let's say the, the number was 30 and I played 30 rounds in the last four months which would be kind of crazy. But then like my, it would be only the four months. It'd like I, I wish there was something a little more like to let older rounds drop off if you're actively playing a lot to be more, more, more relevant. More bias for amateur yeah. players. It'll show if you're doing better or if you're actually going through a slump versus just the right. level if you're in there. Which is fine. Like I think that's, it's good to know because I, overall, like it should be an accurate or as close to an accurate representation as we have, because that's our only metric. So if I'm saying, cause currently I'm rated, I don't even know what I'm rated, maybe like eight twenty, eight seventy something, but I've been shoot, I shot like 880 and 850, 865 rounds, like, and that's kind of where I'm living right now. But so much is still holding on from before that like, right. it's nowhere close to what I'm currently throwing. So I'm kind of curious as to what a good um, middle ground could be for potential change in the amateur rating picture. Hmm. I think that makes sense with like, maybe it could even be like, as the number of years you've been playing increases, the recency bias slowly fades away. But when you first start, 
usually your skill level increases more quickly. So it should be more recently biased because over the first year, you could easily go from low eights to low nines. But within that year, you're averaging 850. But at the end of the year, you're shooting nine to 920s or something like that. So then you can play lower division tournaments. But (laughs) no, go ahead. I just looked at my rating. I went up eight points in June and I'm at 827. So like the higher rated rounds are showing up and like, pulling pulling the numbers up but it's not near where like my average tournament play is currently right. but you're you're shooting uh closer to 9 you know 8 875 to I would say 850 to 870 is like where I'm currently like living that's where I'm hovering unless it's a really bad day or a really yeah. good day right you know? that's but, what averages averages right right and I well, wish that the rating picture could more accurately represent that what if, what if, like you said, the, that the, it's all electronic at this point, nobody's crunching the numbers behind the scene. Making yeah. It's an algorithm average. for sure. And like an when algorithm. you have re- rounds go in, like they're rated heavier than your older ones, but nonetheless, the older ones are still in the mix. It should be, it should be for like, maybe if you're going to have a rating, you have to have like 10 current rounds. That's it. Just 10 current rounds. Your 10 most current and every round that you play will eliminate the 10th. What was the 10th? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It could be something like that. And then in just like, who knows, uh, in um, two months, you could have played however many tournaments, five or six tournaments, and you could have had 12 plus rounds of golf and your average could be completely different. Whereas if it was all part of a, a calendar year average, it's going to just be very slow, very slow and not really represent the player you are at that moment. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Yeah. I mean, the other calculation they have is the standard deviation. So I know that mine currently is, it must be gigantic because in the last year, I rating wise have been all over the board, you know, like in the seven hundreds, almost tapping nine. It's like, Whoa, like my range of play is gigantic at right now. So as time goes on and that narrows, those lower rounds will naturally drop if they're outside of your standard deviation. But because of the range in which I've played based in the current calculations, they won't drop because they're not low enough. Like I'd have to shoot probably like a 715 round to have it drop before it's even considered like over a hundred points lower than my rating currently. So I don't know. I, I think it's a really interesting idea and like a definitely an area that could use some revision. What do you think? What do you think about people stepping away from like a bad day to kind of curve their rating where, you know, their ankle doesn't feel too well. They just want to get off of it. They weren't playing well. And like, I'm, I'm done for today to kind of salvage what is their rating. Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I mean, I think DNFs hurt you when you take too many of them. <laughs> um, but I don't think. I mean, look, I will always advocate for your health. And so like, if there really is something that is hurting you or you are not in a place to play and you need to stop, like stop. But if you're going to just do it to salvage your rating, I don't know. I mean, this is part of let's dig deep and let's, let's try and focus up. And if there's nothing wrong physically, nothing hurts. I don't know. Like everyone has a bad day, right? I mean, I had a thing where I almost DNF'd, but there were only three people on the card. So I felt like I had to. I, to continue, but I just, I was in a really bad place emotionally, personally, and I wanted to play disc golf to get out of my head and I got more in my head. So like, it was a really <laughs> bad idea to go play a rated just, round that night I just, instead of doing it. But I mean, yeah, I bring it up to because, salvage the rating. Yeah. Cause people, um, I bring it up because people just hold the rating. So like, so near and dear is like everything. Whereas are we as good as our average? Is that where we're at? Or are we better than that? Like, I don't think our average or our rating could ever keep up with exactly who we are as a player. It's it's just spread out over too long of a period, over too many different courses, too many different variables. I think the only way you could look at something in a whole is if, you know, for the lucky ones at the top is that power ranking to really see where you stack mm-hmm. up against things. How many people you're beating over you know, in your region with the top players who are placing in your region. That would be really cool to have a state power ranking going on. Yeah. 
That would be cool. Like regionally stay like and then you break it out a little bit more. Sure. Sorry, a thought just popped into my mind as you were talking about like players playing with each other. There was something I saw, I think it was on Twitter this weekend. So the Pro Tour uh, was at Idlewild and I wish I remember who posted it because it would be very helpful in this moment. <laughs> but it full, was full story. It was the the tweet was like I wish that tea times were based upon rating and not your PDGA number because you have these, I think it's PDGA. You know, I don't even know if a pro tour is what exactly they do. Let's be honest. But um, there were like super high rated players playing at the certain time of day that had like the most horrible weather. And then you have these other guys playing who are the same rated that are in clear blue skies. And it's like, how does this stack up when you look at the field? Like, wouldn't you want people who are at the same, by the rating system, level <laughs> of play, right? Like playing in similar to conditions to really map out and see how they compare with each other. Like, isn't that kind of the point? Yeah. I, you're going to have tough. <sighs> you know, like that would be an interesting change because then you would you see different like feature cards and things and see what that actually looks like in practice it's and not just thought. It's tough to say like, hey, because of your last name, you're always going to tee off last at this tournament. Or, hey, your PDJ is the, the highest, so you're going to tee off at 7 o'clock in the morning. Or it's FPO, you're teeing off later in the day. It's hard to just like really single it out, I think, to one thing because if you're doing tee times, it's imagine the nightmare of a job to be like, predicting what's the most optimal condition for the best, most prestigious. No, I don't even mean let's put the best people in the best conditions. I mean, like let's line them up by rating and have that go throughout the day. And so I, that whatever, whether it is, wherever it is, the same level of player is playing in the same condition. So that I when the round is rated, they are actually accurate. I think the, I think the lowest rated player should tee off the earliest. <laughs> And, yeah. and that, that's no, fair I, I would, I would think that's fair too. I'd take that every time. Cause if you're the lowest rated in a pro tour, you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm here. I'm gonna do it. Like, I don't care what time it is. Like, you Sorry. know, it's, your it's card the experience is, to be there. Yeah. Your card is not going to be uh Calvin and Mason Ford or <laughs> Nico Lacastro. It's probably going to be Steve, uh, Lazar Jack and, uh, Bob Morris from, you know, <laughs> wherever he's from and uh you're gonna just become friends out names. <laughs> just name drop and made up that's people what Lou does. That's that's right. name, name drop and made up people it's easy i mean i will say on the flip side that when i played in the stafford open i played my first round with stacy ronsley and i was like this is <laughs> so cool like this oh. is so cool that i actually have a chance to play with someone and you know i see missy over there and i like th there were just these people that i've idolized and i thought oh my gosh i get to throw a disc with like real, yeah, real touring pro players. And like that experience was something I will never forget. So it's funny that I, I'm here, I turn around and I'm like, you're right. <laughs> the lower rated players should all be together. Well, but it's just an interesting thought. Like, what does that look like? And then of course, second, third day, fourth day is a different shuffle naturally based so on scoring. Something else that we talked about at the beginning of this was how does it affect the players or their, you know, their, um, their sponsorships, their bonuses, is the rating mm -hmm. really depicted? I don't have a sponsorship with anyone who is worried about what my rating's doing. Um, I know if you're top, if you're sitting on top and you get enough of those uh, points in the series and you're a points winner, if you're winning events, those seem to be the big things that are going to kick you into the big bonuses with your company you're representing. I would think that if you're looking to get sponsored, the stigma is become a thousand plus rated. No company could say no to you. And that might be the case, but I can promise you, you have to have a good attitude. You have to be able to represent things in a, in a positive way. Companies, um, sponsorships are all about represent representation of brands and, uh, being a part of something a little bit bigger than yourself. And, uh, ratings do tend to be like that thing that could get you there or hold you back from getting there. Um, so that's why it's important for some people that are pushing and so hungry for that best rating because they want to try to maybe pursue that dream. And 
if ratings do get sorted out where they do benefit players a little bit better, they, they show you who you are as a player now in a better snapshot of who you are now. I think you can help some of those hungry young players who are looking to step into the next level and hit the tour, find a reason to hit the tour because they are having people who believe in them. So ratings play a big way in wanting to get sponsorship. I don't think they have a lot to do with maintaining your sponsorship. Yeah. I, I mean, <clears throat> when I applied to infinite last year for sponsorship, it was 100%. And of course it's different with pro and am sponsorship and what that looks like and requirements and whatever. I did it on a whim. Cause I was like, Oh my gosh, it's open. This is cool. I love the tagline, you know, throw what you love, like an open bag, like this idea, it was exciting to me. And so I just, I went for it. And when I got the email that I was on the team, I was Truly shocked. Lou, you know this. Yeah, I, um, I called him I and I what said, do I do? what do I do? I was like, Lou, what is happening? Um, Everything I said would happen. You're a great, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a great ambassador to the game. But that's right? the thing. I think there's so much more than just your rating. Cause what yeah. in December I was eight. Well, clearly I don't even know where I am, but like, <laughs> cause Look. my current number, I don't know, but it was, it was low. And it's like, I'm not a pro player, but I, I think, this was my point in my application and the point that I bring this up showed that passion and that other things were in the works and that I was getting creative and thinking about disc golf in my life and how to Absolutely. embrace it and be in this community and, and bring something new, hopefully, and exciting to the yeah. space. And so people look at that too. Of course, I know it's an AM and not a pro contract, but you still are a player and players are marketable and they still look for a product as much as your play is, you know, obviously your play has to match. It has to be sure. good, but they're looking to buy in to someone. Same thing as an artist, like as a performer, your manager, when they, of course they want a good singer, a good performer, but who is this person? Like, what do they say? How do they represent the brand? Are they their own brand? Can we put them out in front of folks and like, have them inspire people or, or whatnot or whatever the mission is of who, whatever the company is. So um, you have to really look at the whole picture, I think, to get a sense of, um, I don't know, like value that a person brings to a company or can bring. Yeah. You just inspired me to like, want to get up and start doing something. <laughs> <laughs> like, go infinite's lucky to have you, Joanna. This is Oh, awesome. well, thanks. Um, I'll, I'll Dave, let them know. And look, and Dave, and look, Dave, Dave's, Dave's not alone in this conversation. Dave's sponsored by Heiser Media. Yeah, no, but I mean, there are so many avenues like to be involved. And I think that's, well, number one, exciting, but also the beauty of a newer sport that's like rapidly gaining popularity that like yeah. new roles are being developed. I mean, you look at the pro tour, like even mid season, they're hiring people to come on board and expand the team. And there's just so much opportunity and I think it takes you know the right people and, and player and, and company to individually and together get creative and like seize it yeah so. absolutely I think you know the sponsorship from that perspective both amateurs and pros can obviously benefit but like we we're talking about the ratings are very indicative of being able to get that sponsorship and to the point where we've heard stories about like pro players not playing certain tournaments because either they think the field's not going to be strong enough or the course that they're playing doesn't suit their game, that they just won't play those types of tournaments to almost inflate their rating to get to the point where they can get the sponsorships. And then, like you said, Lou, once you get to that point, you got the sponsorship, you can almost then let it slide back down, but you're already a sponsored player. So, you know, it's almost not a, a big deal. I'm lucky to have um, a sponsorship kind of set up where uh, just just being me was <laughs> was it. Just Lou, you could be you, ideal. It's, you know, you put a smile on, you're, you're fun, and uh, people team, seem to enjoy uh, what you have to say or what you're doing on the course. And I get involved. So, but yeah, it's, it's crazy to think that... Um, uh, like a real serious sponsorship, career sponsorship, like you're, you're depending on this for your livelihoods type sponsorship where you're hashing out, you're, you're writing figures on a piece of paper, a little nappy, you're <laughs> sliding it over and you're like, that's not good. Uh, we, need, we, need, we need to add some zeros. Um, I think, yeah, you, you end up with almost the obligation where you can't just, oh, I'm going to go play and win every C tier I want this year. No, you have to play so many majors. You 
have to, you know, there's obligation to your sponsorship. It's not just, Hey, wear this shirt, go play your heart out, kid, see what you could do. If uh, you need anything, dial us up at 1-800-DISC-GOLF and we'll, we'll help you out. <laughs> no, you, you have to, you have to, you have to kind of say, I'm going to live up to who I am and who I think I could be. You're marketing yourself and you're trying to be a top uh, disc golf prospect in, in this very small community because disc golf's bit getting bigger, but it's still, the top is so small. It's, yeah, you know, for sure. Um, there's only so many at the top. There's only so many top seats. Right. I think Every, it's tough everybody, too. Everybody, everybody can't fly first class. <laughs> Ooh, got him. Good one. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Mic drop. <laughs> yeah, mic drop. No, I was even going to say like when big money gets involved, I mean, nerves are a different thing. And I mean, there was so much movement in this off season and I'm, I'm curious, like, for the companies and the players, like how their new potential salary or not potential, how their new salaries, let's say, because people are salaried now, like are affecting their mental game. Because unfortunately, I mean, there's one FPO player that I I can't not ever check the scores on because it's, it's always shocking to me that like this person is suddenly out of the mix after receiving a big um, salary. And it's like, I wonder, gosh, like needing to live up to that expectation. This got me thinking about ratings and play. And it's like on your mind when you say, okay, call 1-800-DISC-GOLF if you need us. It's like, wow, what happens when you do have that money? And, and, and the eyes are on you to perform every week at that top elite level and stay in that mix constantly. Like, I wonder what, you know, goes through your head and, and your body as you prep and, and you are in a slump and you're just trying to, trying to dig yourself out and, it's it's a tough spot. I mean, a lot of pressure. I don't know. I'm just kind of spitballing here because it it just made me think of that. And yeah, there is a lot of pressure. And and you want to perform to your rating. You don't want to see it drop as much as ratings right. don't matter. But you don't want it to drop. Like you hate to see that negative sign of the second Tuesday of the month yeah. when it comes out. You know, it's like so sad. So uh. the, like even for example, the June update. Okay, which. That's that's kind of old. I wonder. Well, did I pull up something old? Did I mess up here? No, no. The but, July. Yeah. We're the just July short will of have July. To happen right. when we the day drop we post this. this. Episode, so it'll be today while you're watching it. Yeah. So so you're talking somebody like Paul McBeth, big contract, big deal. Okay. Actually, that was a reworking of what was already a big deal, right? So Paul McBeth had this large contract, uh, you know, uh, record breaking contract, we could call it. And then yeah. I think either it was close to being fulfilled or there was a renegotiation um, and it was more money and a lot more, a lot more money. Right. So was there an added pressure and expectation? If you're going to play a, pay a player this much money, what is going to justify it for the brand? Um, and can he still focus to compete that much without the stress of that? And, I think Paul's somewhere around fifth or sixth place in the rankings for the, for the pro tour, um, you know, above him are really good names and they do that with averaging out the place that they finish. Paul's had a tough season, but Paul has done so much with the, you know what I mean? With with the Paul foundation. So I know, I'm just saying play, I'm just saying play wise, Joanna, Joanna, uh, we're talking our local events let's just say we have all the good players from our area show up and it's a 30 and 30, 30 player MPO field for myself. If the weekend before I'm out raking some leaves and I'm just talking <laughs> it up on the course and I go to compete that next week, I will not have a top 10 finish. This, this man is out there. <laughs> traveling That's, so, the true. Globe. That's he's, so true. He's traveling the globe, putting in baskets in the ground where there isn't disc golf or where, yeah. he, where he wants there to be disc golf, where he's, where he's getting the advice or the ask for his, um, his expertise. And he's still maintaining a top 10 in the ranking systems. He's, he's a goat. He's a goat. Easily. Easily. So if you're going to talk about sponsorships and ratings and where you sit with power rankings and all that stuff, that's a great uh, display of, you know, yeah, it kind of encompasses all of it. Oh yeah. I mean, his, that's his foundation. And like, definitely Discraft has bought into that and has supported that and loved and, and helped him with that initiative. I mean, it's so clear. 
who honestly, who wouldn't want to be connected to such great community work like that? I mean, right. it's it's kind of a no brainer, especially yeah. when the goat himself is like <laughs> right. leading the charge to bring disc golf to underserved areas. Yeah, he can still do it and maintain one of the top ratings of you know anybody <sighs> in the world, and as well as like you were saying, the the pressure that all the pros are feeling about trying to keep their ratings high and all these other things that we were talking about that are just like, it, they don't really make sense. You know, why are the ratings so important? That's how we kind of started this episode. You, you, so you, let's, let's answer one more question because we're getting short on yeah. time. Rating the questions does that we not wanted equal to get to. your self-worth. Ratings right? do not equal your worth. <laughs> so the question is, what do we do about it? Right. One of the things that I've heard is just once you become a pro, whatever number that might be, it's a thousand, it's 900, depending on what division you're playing, um, then you're just pro. Then ratings don't matter. That makes sense to me. Wonder if you guys have any other thoughts about that or other ideas of how to fix this, change the rating system, do something else. These players, like we said, they're getting added so much extra pressure because they have to maintain the rating and getting sponsorships has to be so high. What do you think can be done about it? So I would like to just go back to what I said before. Um, it's an algorithm for sure. Nobody's crunching numbers. The moment that you finish your tournament round, it should be contributed instantly to what your current rating is now. It shouldn't really backlog more than 10 rounds. That could be five events, five two-round events. That should really just show who you are in a moment. And that's what it should be based off of. When you go to playing professional, I'm okay with you still having a rating. That's okay. I think the, the professional focus then becomes just being the best player you can. You, you shouldn't really be bound by a number of what your rating is. You need to strive for your best, but you also need to know where that puts you with other players. So I think the quick turnaround rating could show you a little bit better of who you are and could have much more relevancy. Um, and then if you could really just work on your game a little bit and get to the top, top, top of the fields, then just worrying about the power rankings. If you're uh, a so-called Ricky Wysocki or Gannon Burr, then it matters to you. If you're Chris Dickerson, power rankings are the way to go. And it's already in place. It's in place. It's there. Right. Yeah. Hmm. What do we do? Um, I, yeah, I don't think we can, you know, totally eliminate ratings when you register your own PDGA <laughs> account as pro. I think like we are like self-determining who's a pro and who's not, right. which is like kind of a very funny system, you know, yeah, guilty. <laughs> all it like all it takes is you to like click a button and pay a different amount of money. And you can right. say, oh my gosh, I'm a professional disc golfer. You know what I mean? Like, here's my card that says so like, and okay, but <laughs> that's another thing, I suppose. <laughs> like there should be a threshold of something that determines that you like minimum are a professional. Rating. Yeah. Because I think especially people who are on the fence are like, you know, emerging pro and they register for pro sometimes they'll still play down in ma1 or fa1 for certain events for certain things and like that's okay but as long as you're in that rating cap so that i think still needs to exist but um yeah what do we do i, I don't know i don't know the right answer i think there are great ideas that we've kind of thrown around here on the pod and a collection of them. I, I love having, you know, 10 rounds or maybe even expand a little bit more. Let's say 20 or 25 is your Just current try rating. something. Everybody Just hates something. them. Let's try something. Yeah, something that's not a full year. Let's yeah. let's try and keep it a little bit more recent and have a greater understanding of who you are as a player in that smaller snapshot of how you're scoring, not who you are as a player, a better way, a picture of how you score as a player. Let's put it yes. that way because we're all individuals. But um, yeah, and I think when it comes to sponsorship and, and work and whatever, like just, just know that you're a marketable person and you just think about you as a package and not just you as your circle one putting percentage, right. you know, <laughs> cause there's so much more to life than that. Yeah. Right. So you don't that have to ratings be, can never show. Yeah. You don't have to be Nate Sexton to do commentary with a, you know, a set of film crew. You could just be likable, you know, and, and knowledgeable <laughs> of the game. Dude, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, so do it. I don't, I, I, mean, don't <laughs> I don't like Dave's, I don't like Dave's idea of getting kicked out of the pro uh, <laughs> because your rating drops enough. Cause that's kind of messing with my stuff. That's not right my now. idea. That was somebody's idea. 
Oh, that's oh. like a general idea going around. <laughs> I'm going to get booted. It's like I hit 70. Just take my driver's license, right? <laughs> You're voted off the island. <laughs> that's yeah. right. So that was our Mr. thoughts Fiverr. about. That's right. That was our <laughs> thoughts about what ratings are, the issues that kind of go between amateur and professional division. Yeah, but, so um, but let us know down below in the comments what your thoughts are. If you're listening to us, you can let us know in a review. Reviews definitely help us on any of the audio listening platforms. As a reminder, we are also giving away this disc right here. Once we reach 500 subscribers on YouTube, if you're a listener, just go over to YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you're a watcher and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? <gasps> Come on. Come on. Right there. Hit it. Uh, but also but tell anyway, your friends. Tell your friends. Share this if you like. Like the video. I appreciate everybody so much for watching and listening this far in the episode. But that's going to do it for us on episode 21. Thanks for watching and listening. And we'll see you in the next hole.